Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today I titled this message, Trouble Ahead While You Work and Play. Trouble Ahead While You Work and Play. I know that not everyone who comes to this channel are believers. And that's okay. Because you don't have to be a believer to have someone sound the alarm, warn you of some things ahead. You don't have to be the one that goes to church every Saturday or Sunday or the Bible study on Wednesday to feel or suspect that something's just not right in your household or elsewhere. You see, we have some individuals who, while they work, while they play, there are those who are believers that God is doing some things with. And some folks are not going to like what's on the memo, what's on the contract, what's on the upcoming television screen. There are some shows, if you will, and I say that knowing full well that that's just what media has turned into shows where there's people who will be hurt, where there's trouble that will cause people to end up experiencing some of the most awful torture known to man. There are those who are trying to prevent such things from happening while others are going along with whatever their government tells them to do. While you work, while you play, there is a game, if you will, that some people play with folks' minds if you let them. Oh, it is this game where they say that I am, I'm okay, I'm all right, and you know better. There's this game where when you question them on what they're up to, they say, I'm okay, and I'm all right, and there's nothing going on, and you can leave me alone, and go on about your business while you work, while you play. Oh, while the cat is away, the mouse will play. If only that little catchphrase, if only that catchphrase was incorrect. But right now, some of you all didn't just happen to come across this message. While you are away, yes, that mouse is playing. That mouse is playing with some things if he or she's a child that they have no business playing with. If you haven't checked electronics in a long time, you might want to do just that. If you haven't checked where they really went, not just what they told you. Child or grandchild, you might want to check up on them. As someone once told me some years back, you just might have to do a pop call. You just might have to see if they really went where they said they were going. Oh, we got some people who like to make some excuses for all sorts of things. Because, see, it's inconveniencing me. And narcissistic type parents, self-absorbed, selfish, self-righteous, got enough issues of their own. They don't step outside of their comfort zones. They like to see things run on autopilot without them. And then they're the first who cry when the child commits suicide. Come on. Oh, I didn't know. You didn't know that your child was depressed? Oh, well, let's believe that the parent or parents didn't know that the child was depressed because, you see, they were so busy working and so busy playing that they didn't see the writing on the wall. God does show us what is ahead. Now, anybody who wants to sit up there and say, no, he doesn't. Well, that's because you don't pay attention because you're too busy once again working and playing. But there's always some kind of signs that he gives us, whether it's someone talking to us and we get cold chills because it hits home. How did this person know this or know that about me? Oh, we know that something's about to go down because some people have twist speech in media a bit or some people just simply tell us without a muzzle on their mouth. Look, you all better brace yourselves because <laughs> there's some things ahead. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed when it comes to God. But everything has changed when it comes to man, when it comes to woman. Man and woman, 
they change their minds, their ideas, their thoughts. They change things from one second to the next. When you live in a self-absorbed society like ours, and there's a lot of that that goes on, there is no connection to the one true God like there ought to be. There is no grounding or foundation, if you will. It's carnality as well involved with selfishness, self-absorbed, self-centeredness. I did an audio message a while back about the cult-like family members. Some folks can point out a cult a mile away. You know why? Because they themselves are running their families like cults. You listen to me. You do for me. You come around during certain holidays. You come back for your programming. You make sure that you act in a way that is appropriate or otherwise we kick you up out of the cult, out of the family construct. You see? There are those who run their establishments just like a cult. There are those in government that run government like a cult. Oh, it's very easy to see what those other people are doing. But what is happening right in front of you? When people don't do things, expose things, um, don't go along with the programming. You got even the cult like murderous members who go out there and annihilate some people. They will murder their careers, murder anything that they can get their hands on. We see these sorts of things unfold in media. Some folks say, well, that's nothing new. We're always looking for what's new, what's bright, what's trendy, what have you. This isn't the type of God that we serve, my friend. He tells us some things that, yes, you may have already known, you already picked up on some things, but if you have brought him into your fold, into your life, then he gives you some confirmation on some things. And then if you stick around with God long enough, yes, there will be something new. There will be something strange. There will be something odd. There will be something exciting. There will be something that will make the hairs on the back of your neck stand. For some of you all, this message in and of itself is making you want to think a little bit more, making you want to listen a little bit longer. God has not changed, but as I said before, man and woman has changed. God is still using minor as well as major prophets to speak all sorts of information in our lives if we're willing to listen, if we're willing to follow uh, the one true God's precepts, if we're willing to take up arms, if you will, pray, fast, whatever it is that God has called us to do, in our situations as well as others. And when we listen to him, then yes, we get to see things that other people don't get to see. We get to see things a bit deeper than that one who says, well, this isn't anything new. Yeah, but you don't have a new idea, new concept, new thought as a result of the information that you've been given. Because it may be the same old, same old, but at the same time, though, there's something that you miss. There's something that God is trying to show you that while you're working and while you're playing, I'm doing something. Some folks, they're like, I don't really care. OK, so be it. Then you don't care. And then when the storm comes, oh, now you want somebody to give you an umbrella? <laughs> no, too late. Nobody's going to give you an umbrella in the middle of a doggone storm. Not a storm that God himself designed and when God himself tells his people, don't give him, don't give her an umbrella. She's not getting no money this time. He's not going to get any type of shelter this time. Uh, this one is not going to have his crew around him. This one's not going to have his family around him. This woman over here, she thought she could rely on him, but God had been setting up a plan for a long time that she didn't recognize where that man is not going to be around. You see, I will tell you, give you an example, being that it's very close to the uh, day that my grandmother passed away. Leading up to her death, the writing was on the wall. There was plenty of signs that God was taking her out. Anybody who thought otherwise and wanted to wish or hope or what have you, it didn't matter. Oh, pray for her. it didn't matter. I didn't do the, I didn't say those kind of prayers of, oh, please keep her around a little bit longer. When I knew that God has said, has shown himself strong, even brought visions of family members who had long left us before my eyes and said that say goodbye to your grandmother. I'd been saying goodbye years prior mentally. 
And then, of course, physically, not coming around as much. Because, see, sometimes some of us, we come around people and then mentally, spiritually, physically, you start to fall apart when you see that they're falling apart. And when eventually they die because a part of you dies with them. God was setting me up because he said, look, you have a calling on your life. You opened up that door for me to come on in. I'm not going to let you as well as everything that I have called you to work upon fall by the wayside behind the death of your grandmother. So it is essential. It is important that in time you distance yourself because you are treating her like a God. And I said, oh. And I didn't recognize it initially because you do call often, right? Some of you all know what I'm talking about. You come around often. You're listening to every little word that they say. Um, you're focusing on the next thing they're going to tell you. Meanwhile, God says, you got straight access to me. I've given you authority. And so I redirected the spiritual side of who I was that was focusing on what grandma was saying, what grandma was doing. I redirected that and put that upon the one true God who said, I get the praise. I get the honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, and when you do that, you will begin to see some things around you that you didn't ordinarily see because you decided to put aside the work a bit, put aside the play a bit, put aside the people that you used to worship a bit, right? Until eventually you don't worship them at all. And then you're able to see things from a clear perspective with regard to your personal issues. The types of things that know that cult leader of a family member cannot give you. That cult leader of a government cannot provide for you. You see, well, I trust in the Lord. Somebody says amen and hallelujah because there's breakthrough for you. But for those that want to keep going along with flawed human beings and put them on a pedestal, well, you're going to get nothing but mistakes. You're going to get nothing but errors. You're going to keep finding yourself having to go down this path because the other path wasn't working. That family member, that friend, the you know, person who you esteem so much, the celebrity or what have you, took you down the left hand path because they didn't want you to see what the right hand was up to. Come on. When God uses his prophets as well as prophetesses to speak a word, that's not a time for people to start getting all defensive and saying, oh, really? And nitpicking and picking apart and then wanting to shoot the messenger because you don't like what God is about to do. Because you want to bury your head in the sand. You want to stay caught up in your work, caught up in your play. Meanwhile, God is saying, I'm telling you right now, for instance, for one particular individual, I'm telling you right now, it's time to zero in on your finances. And no, you're not going to be able to get the money from who you think you're going to get the money from. It's time for you to come up with a way to be able to get additional money other than the traditional way of a nine to five job or an 11 to seven job or a three to 11 job. I got a plan for you. If you just stick with me, kid, we can go somewhere. You see? And so the individual who has the money troubles and some of you all, you checked out the financial trouble audio. The one who has the money troubles, he has a choice. He could either go and do what it is that God has called him to do, which means that I've got to come up with multi ways of coming uh, of getting money as opposed to just the traditional way, because the traditional way doesn't work for everybody. Some folks got little patience. <laughs> they can't handle a job for eight hours, 10 hours. So you're there for four hours and bye, see you. I have a good day, oh, you know, have a good day. And then you're on to your other multi-stream income, you see, for the next four hours or two hours or what have you. Some people don't think like that. That's because they're brainwashed and programmed to do whatever they're used to doing, whatever was told to them years and years ago through childhood, elementary school, public schools, <laughs> college, whatever. So they don't think beyond the typical, you see. Now, that's an example. Working and playing, once again, while you're working and playing, there's somebody who they're on their cell phone. Now, I got to go there about these cell phones because I've seen it at work, at home and elsewhere. Some folks get so caught up in their cell phones and what a text message it, uh, is uh, saying to them. And then they're texting back. They're so caught up in their apps. They're so caught up in so many different things dealing with their electronics, cell phones, iPads, um, you know, Nintendo Switch. <laughs> uh, there's so many different things that are out here. They're so caught up in them that there's somebody in the other room that's doing something. 
there's somebody in the uh, other room that's going through their share of grief. There's somebody who is troubled in their mind, body and spirit over something. But I don't want to be mixed up in that. So I'm going to stick it out with my electronics. Hmm. Sometimes the only way a person can come up out of their electronics is something bad has to happen. I hate to be the messenger of doom and gloom, but that's what it's going to take. Because God has warned some folks that you limit yourself with your electronics. There's a time where you need to turn that phone off. There's a time where you need to turn the computer off and be present for your family. There's a time where you got to stop taking certain text messages because it's leading you down a path that one day when that person get a hold of, the, of that phone and some folks think it'll never happen. Oh, but it will because God will set it up. They get a hold of that phone and they see what you've been typing and what you've been reading, what you've been receiving or what have you. That will destroy you. Some men as well as women have been destroyed financially, spiritually, mentally behind just a simple text. Well, I thought that it was no big deal to flirt with this one, to communicate with the past, to bring this person along the journey. And can I tell you, it affects the way people interact with each other. People say it's just a harmless text. No, when your mind, when your emotions, when your being is caught up in that text, you're not present for the people around you. Addictions are aided by all sorts of things that happen on electronic devices. I thought he got over that. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, he's on the electronic devices being fed by him. No, he's not out there in the street doing this, that, and the other. But he's having street type of conversation, having all sorts of um, disrespectful types of uh, activity going on while he's married. Or while he's supposed to be committed to his female counterpart, mistress, girlfriend, what have you. <laughs> Wife. Oh, we got some folks who they don't think that they can be caught. And then when they get caught, then they want to play dumb. I don't know how that got on my computer. One individual told me years ago. And the Lord said he put that on the computer. He just doesn't want you to see how weak he is. Another individual, oh, I'm going there today because some of you all, you got to understand that while you working and playing, somebody is conjuring up a story or two on why they do what they do, but you haven't found out yet because you're too busy working and playing. I know this message encourages some people to start snooping and digging. And I know for some people, they're like, oh, don't start. I don't want people to be all up in my business. Well, then get rid of your business then. And then they won't have any reason to snoop, to check up on. Say no to the flirtatious conversation, to the past conversation about this woman and that one and this man and that one. Just say no to it. And then you don't have to be concerned about, oh, I got to shut my phone off because she coming up the stairs. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I got to shut this thing off because uh, he's coming around the corner. Oh, I got to go outside. I can't tell you how many times I come across some people who had to go outside to have a conversation. What was wrong with having a conversation indoors? Had to have a conversation in the car. Had to have a conversation in front of the house or around the bed. I am working in an industry right now where while the family is upstairs in the room, okay, <laughs> we got some individuals that don't mind walking properties and so forth with their cell phones. Having inappropriate conversations, mind you. When I was uh, living at one particular property, we saw right in front of us the adulterous uh, affair unfold unfolding. She was working two relationships at the same time. She had her conversation with her husband and her children. Then she would go down the stairs and have conversation over there, <laughs> mind you, by a playground, a family-oriented place. To have conversations with her lover. Sooner or later, her husband, after the divorce or during the divorce proceedings, said that, I know that you were cheating on me. She said, no, I wasn't. He said, yes, you were. You and then she even tried to lie to me when I was talking to her. 
He said, I know that you were cheating. And she said, no, I wasn't. You know, you I don't know where you got that information. He said, you can say what you want. But I know. You see? While some folks is working, while some folks is playing, there's that mouse. You see? People will when they're busted when they're caught cold in things you might as well prep yourself for what you're about to find out some bodies they're going to say that what you see isn't really what you see they've been working the story for a while that if she ever finds out or if he ever finds out this is what i'm going to say some people didn't even think about that so they're coming up with their little story because they're listening to what i'm saying but you can come up with what all of what you want anyway but at the end of the day God he gets the final word and if that person is a believer and they've been fasting and praying and on their knees and going to the altar and asking the Lord for all sorts of things your story doesn't matter your wiggle room is <laughs> blown up we got for instance we got some folks in media who they always come up with some kind of story to cover for this celebrity and for this entertainer and for this government leader, or what have you. They're always coming up with some kind of story based on what the public relations campaign of that particular leader, uh, media personality or what have you tells them to say. So the news is not fair. It's bias. It works in the best interest of whoever uh, wants a certain image put out there a certain story okay so you see this sort of thing unfold and if you keep watching this stuff every single day over a period of time you start to pick up on some things for your own life hmm. next thing you know you find yourself coming up with your own story of how you think things are going to play out with certain media folks celebrities what have you meanwhile where's the proof so you pull from the same people who's deceiving you each and every night. You pull from them to be able to validate what it is that popped up in your mind. And folks who are the ones who are awakened, they're not going along with it. You just might even cause an argument or two. You see, now we can see this sort of thing when it comes to media, right? You got to see this sort of thing when it comes to your family members, to your co-workers, to your partners, to whoever that you suspect God put something in your spirit that I don't feel good this day. I'm focused on my job, but I just got this nagging feeling I need to go home. Hmm. That's all the more reason. Normally, I do this. Normally, I do that. Well, maybe I'll just... I don't know. I'll just ignore it. You might not want to do that. That might be the day that somebody does something and you weren't there to prevent them from doing what have, what have you, whatever that might be. Somebody needs to fill in the, the blank because there's too many people who listen for me to give example after example. Lately, I just haven't felt right when I'm intimate with my partner. Oh, this happens with women a, quite a bit. God just... That has something within us that we can feel something ain't right. So, I don't know. This isn't a good time for me to be focusing on getting my fleshly need met. Instead, I need to fall back a bit. And then you fall back a bit and you notice some things. Mm -hmm. Some folks, they experienced it during intimacy. I remember there was one individual. I used to see these demons rise up when I was intimate with him. I mean, they were mixed up between animals and human beings. Some of the most grotesque figures would show up while we were intimate. And I said, what is going on? And the Lord said, those are all the people he slept with and their demons. What? That's why I told you not to get involved with him. And those demons, if you will, ended up showing up in the flesh. He was doing what he liked to do, and that was cheat. Okay? He moved wrong. Some of you all from the street, you know how this goes. There was something different in the way that he moved without being graphic. And when you approach your partner, he going to come up with something. Like, 
I don't know what you're talking about. You crazy. Ain't nobody cheating on you. You see? Some folks don't think that pornography is cheating on anybody. It's just my personal pleasure. And besides, so-and-so, she used to look at it too. Or, you know, he used to look at it. But if they're not doing that sort of thing now, it doesn't make it okay and all right. While you work, while you play, somebody is doing something. If they do not hold themselves accountable to the one true God, if they are not the type of people who are well disciplined and crucifying that flesh, if they still got a lot of monkeys on their back, if they are the type of people who always figure out ways to stay out of the presence of people of light, people of God. If they are the type of people who like to run from truth and are more concerned about the lie. If these individuals have been accused of being liars by even their own family members, selfish, controlling, abusive, whether emotionally or physically, you got to watch those folks. If your child has been repeatedly warned by teachers, his or her grades are slipping, or could be grandchild. There's been a lot of problems lately with that child. Rebellious, disrespectful. Even in the church, because some folks will take them to the church and they still cutting up and acting up. Even worse. You got to check up on that person. If that one has this smoke screen of charity, being so polite, friendly, everybody loves them, so sweet, so kind, but yet every now and again you see something dark about that person. You don't keep working. You don't keep playing. You put some things down. You learn how to take a day off. Okay. And you sit back and you watch. God rest her soul. My grandmother was very good at reading people. Specifically women. And she would sit back and she would just take a moment to stop cooking. To stop talking on the phone. And she would just sit back and think of it. And when a person was in her presence, she would look at everything. The things that they didn't even know she was looking at. And then she would formulate these questions. And the questions seemed harmless, but those answers she was analyzing. And she made a determination of whether or not, <laughs> this is where her flesh sometimes would get in the way, whether or not that was a person that could benefit her. Benefit her. <laughs> But then there were times where God had moved on her spirit to speak a word to some people and they didn't like her words. And eventually they wouldn't come around because her words would be so bold. They would shine a light on some dark areas that some folks thought that they could get away with their lies, their secrets, their cover ups, their temptations, the things that they hadn't told anybody. But yet, <gasps> you know, yeah, <laughs> I know. So where are we headed? We're headed toward a season. Those of you all who've been following for quite some time, we're headed toward a season where God is telling us, you're going to stop working for a bit, take a day off or a few days off. You're going to stop playing a bit. And get in touch with your children. Find out what's going on. Get in touch with your parents. For those who are playing. Going out there. Doing what they do. Playing video games. Entertaining oneself. It's time to connect. There are those who. You're not called to connect with any negative family members. Doesn't matter what their title is. Parents, grandparents, cousins, what have you. But what you are going to do is be that observant one at the next family holiday event. You're not going to be so active in the conversation. 
and then you'll be able to get some pieces of the puzzle put together. Lord, what's going on with this one and that one? Some other folks, you need to get your head out of the news so much and what Trump is doing and what this one's doing and what that one's doing. Okay. And you need to get in touch with the people around you because God is taking some people out of here. There is a lot of people that I see in the future that's unfortunately being buried six feet deep. So where you feel so moved to call, where you feel so moved to write, where you feel so moved to reach out, do it. For others, you may not feel so moved to do any of those things, but you need to reconnect with your own family members that are within reach. Give your son a hug. Give your daughter a hug. Give your husband or your wife a hug. Because that might be the last. I'm not saying this to trouble some folk, but I know that the God that I serve, and you all know this from personal experience, a person can be here today and gone tomorrow. So while you work and while you play, there's an enemy too that's coming up with just another way to bring you down. That's a time where you need to be spending your moments praying and asking the Lord to deliver you from enemies. Because the enemy doesn't mind going to the Lord and saying, it's been a long time since I heard her pray to you. It's been a long time since she read her Bible. It's been a long time since he showed up in the church. It's been a long time. Matter of fact, he's dealing with his share of demons. He don't know nothing about any deliverance. Can I get at him? And the Lord said, go ahead. Just don't kill him. And so the next thing you know, some people are going through some trials. They're going through some trials and they don't connect the dots at all they're working and all they're playing. is why they're battling like they're battling because they did not know or didn't bother to or didn't reconnect with the spiritual. Once again, we're made up of mind, body and spirit. And if you are not connected to the spirit, that's why the enemy can play a game or two on you because he figured you're <laughs> you're not powerful. You don't have any type of authority in Christ. You don't even know what type of authority Christ had. You don't spend any time studying. The devil know more than many people know. And that's why he can hit you where you're weak. And if he can't get to you, because God may have his anointing or what have you, protection, your children, your children who don't know any better because you didn't teach them any better, he can get at them. And many a man lost his son making a pact with the devil. I didn't think it was a pack when I told him if he could do this and that for me, I would do this, that, and the other. And I thought that when I got all those, you know, blessings and I thought God had something to do with it. But if you're a child of darkness and you reaching out and you want God to do some things, but yet you in the devil's camp, the devil say, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll do it. You don't need to call out to God. You called him into existence. And so. He has his way and many celebrities have done just that. That's why I tell some people, you don't need to be concerned about what celebrities are doing. They're gone. They're gone. They sold out. They ain't thinking about you. So be careful what you're doing. Spend some time with the one true God. Have that, dare we say, at work life kind of balance. And even if you're having trouble trying to get that, maybe you need to go to the one true God and talk to him about what you could do a bit differently so that you can get in touch with the people that you live with or get out of touch with the people that are causing you all sorts of drama and trauma. God is a just God, a faithful God, a loving God, and he wants to hear from you. Blessings to you. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube Inum Enterprise 7. May God richly bless you as well as those that you love. If you feel so moved to give, you can do just that. We do welcome all sorts of gifts that are, of course, of light. Blessings to you. <laughs>